male, female, preacher, non-preacher, missionary, non-missionary. Everybody's got this word. Listen to me close. So far, what I heard was good word. But my problem is, I never hear a word that's designed specifically for you. God is not speaking to everybody to tell his people what to do. That's too much confusion. If we had only 10 leaders in the state, this is just an example, the people would be going in 10 different directions. God said, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? The, my Bible says, walk by the same rules. My Bible said, mind the same things. My Bible said that his people were one. God does not say one thing to you and something else to somebody else. That's confusion. Amen. Amen. And if I was in a position of authority, anyone connected to me that I felt was not speaking according to the oracles of God, I would silence them. It's quiet, isn't it? Why am I talking like this? I'm talking like this because I've had enough. My brother was preaching this morning in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It, it, it amazed me that we are on the same page. When I say the same page, I'm talking about the Word of God. Mm -hmm. There's no other books after Revelations. Right, right. Maybe the book of Eli. Brother Anthony, if you've seen that movie. Amen. But there's no other books. Too many people have a new way of doing what God says was the only way. And that's confusing. My brother, Superintendent Jeffrey Townsend, made this statement, and I didn't know anybody had that kind of feeling but me. He said this, he said, everybody's coming out the closet but the saints. Everybody's bold enough to come out of the closet, whatever they were in the closet for. But the saints are not coming out. And when I heard that, I said to myself, I'm coming out yes. from among them yes. says the Lord and be ye separate yes. and touch not nor chase not the unclean things yes. I'm coming out by putting a difference yes. between that which is clean and that which is unclean yes. that which is holy and unholy yes. I'm coming out love not the world neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Brothers and sisters, I talked on Thursday about the hot summer. Some of you listened, some of you did not. This is not going to get better just because man wants it to get better. The virus is still alive and well. But society does not want mass panic amongst the people. So the governor, who was firm at one time, is now relaxing some of the restrictions. It's because of the demand of the people. And of course, corporate America needs to make their money. Amen. But the word of God does not relax its restrictions because the people don't want to adhere to them. <clears throat> Even in the word of God that says things like this, so what if some don't believe? Right. Does yeah. that make the word of God of none effect? Yeah. I was sharing with my daughter earlier, you that know Billy Graham, mm -hmm. a profound gospel preacher, yeah. who did not believe in the baptism right. of the Holy Ghost like we do with the evidence of speaking in tongues, but has led millions right. of people yeah into the kingdom of God simply by preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the Hammond B3s, right. didn't have the choirs behind him and the praise dances and all of the other kind of stuff that y'all have. Mm -hmm. He simply stood flat-footed like Jesus and declared the word. 
the Bible says, the word of God, these words I speak, they are spirit and they are life producing. God says this about his word. He says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return void, but it will accomplish the purpose whereunto I have sent it. Amen. The word of God is power by itself. Amen. Paul said it like this. I am not ashamed of the gospel. For what? For it is. The gospel is. Not the music. The gospel is. The power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. So all a person has to do is believe what God says in this word. That for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But should have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth this word and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And he gives reason. Because he has not believed in the only begotten Son of God. Another thing that broke my heart was this. That you can't make people except Christ. You can't make members do what the Lord instructs them to do. You have to be willing and obedient and then you can receive the good of the land. I just had to get that off my chest before I preached to you. Amen. I was going to sing this morning but no. But um, I make up words because I sing what I feel. Amen. Amen. I was going to say except what God allows. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You're better off. Mm -hmm. Trust in God. Mm -hmm. Keep the faith. Never doubt. Mm -hmm. For the Lord will surely bring you out. You may have to cry mm -hmm. sometimes. Yes. You may have to moan. But in the midst of that, keep your hand in God's hand and accept what God allows. Look at somebody and get their attention and say, I just want to know one thing. Can you accept this? Come on, ask another person. Say, Can you accept this? The book of Job, the first chapter, and I'll be reading the first 12 verses. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters, his substance was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all men of the east. And his sons went and feasted <coughs> in their houses every one his day and sent and called for them, for their three sisters, to eat and drink with them. And it was so that when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sacrificed, sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Yeah. Thus he did continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came off among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Which cometh thou 
Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Sam Townsend? See, you have to make the message personal. Job is gone, transition. Spirit is in the presence of God as we speak. But we are still here, and you might become Job. Has thou considered thy servant Job that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect an upright man, one that feareth God and is cureth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doeth Job fear God for nothing? He's got all these cattle. He's got all of these, these sheep. He's got all of these servants. He's got these beautiful seven children. Are you listening to me? Hast thou not made a hedge about him? You've heard this before. It shall not come near my dwelling. That's what some preachers are preaching now. But I'm preaching to folk where it's come to your dwelling, down your chimney, it's in your house, in your living room, and in your mind. That's real talk. That's word. I'm talking to the people who are not the lenders, but the borrowers. I'm talking to the people who's the tail and not the head. Yet they're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and the substance is increased in the land. But I'll tell you what I want you to do. This is Satan talking to God. But put forth thine hand. Do it now and touch all that he had. Touch all that he, you have blessed him with. Health and strength. Clapping in my hands and shouting in my feet. Bless going out, bless coming in. The lender, not the brown. But just put your hand on some of his stuff. And I'll make him curse you to your face. Are y'all here? Amen. Satan's intentions is to make you curse God to his face. When the bad stuff happens to you, his intentions are you to go back to Egypt. Like the children of Israel did. So we would to God, we had stayed in Egypt. I'm making this a relevant message. Wish they had stayed in the crack house. <laughs> At least they could take the edge off their crisis. Wish they had stayed in the pimp game. At least I had money coming in. But we've got to stay outside the church because some of my biggest problems have happened, David said, amongst those who kept the holy day with me. I wish I had to stay in the world because the world is least consistent where the church is not. The world has said, I didn't come here looking for that. I came running from that. And then when I come into the church and see what I ran from in the church. I have an issue. The twelfth birth, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in your power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. And Satan went forth from the presence of God. My brothers and sisters, Job had no control over what God permits and what God allows. Y'all know me. I preach what I live. This is what God told me about me. Satan's intentions are to cause us to lose faith, to cast away our confidence in God. Romans 8 and 28. I heard them singing about it. All things work together. The good, the bad, and the ugly. All of these things work
work together for the good to them who love God and are called according to his purpose. This is not heaven. I think I'm going to teach today. This is not heaven. You are not going to experience heaven on earth. Jesus said, I pray for them that you take them not out of the world, just keep them from the evil. Is that the word of God? So then we must stop preaching and teaching to our people something that God does not say. It is not always going to be well with you. If you listen to the song that the mothers and fathers sang, they said, it is well with my soul. Not with myself. But with my soul, there are two different entities. There's a fleshly man, and there is that spiritual man. The Bible does declare, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he becomes, talk to me, a new creature. And all things have passed away, and behold, what happens? All things have become new. See, the old man, the carnal man, is an enmity against God. The carnal man, the fleshly you. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. But we who are born again, we do not walk after the fleshly man. Even though in the 11th chapter of Romans, Paul says, I got a war in my members. And that's where some of y'all are stuck. War against the law of my mind. Yeah. Let me pause right here. I read a little further. I don't have no war in my members. You said, but Paul did, but you didn't finish Romans. Because Paul said, when I would do good, evil was present. I don't have that problem. The things I would do, I do not. And the things that I know I shouldn't do, I find myself doing. Paul cried out, who then shall deliver me from this body of death? But you didn't read any further. I read further and found, but thanks be to God, who giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see what happens when you don't teach the whole truth? Because when I was a new believer and I read those, those scriptures about the war, then we made it the assumption that every believer kind of struggles with a little something. Oh, I'm, I'm out the closet, y'all. I don't struggle with nothing. I willfully submit myself to God, and he empowers me to live a holy life without a struggle. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? Sin shall not have dominion over you. Is that word or not? Are you listening to me? And I'm not worried about what I did in my past. Why? Because there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the spirit. Isn't that amazing I didn't have to open my book? Because David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against God. In other words, there is no gospel that declares there's an excuse for sinning, especially to the saint. <laughs> we have power over our flesh. Even the Muslims, when I studied with them, when your flesh began to act up, they instructed you to go on a fast. Amen. And starve your flesh. Amen. And, and I did this one day, even as a saint. My flesh was trying to act up, so I said, okay, you're not going to eat for two and a half, three days. Now, call me crazy, but my flesh spoke back to me, so I'll be good. So whenever he tried to rise up, I said, okay, you're not going to eat for three days. 
And my Bible says laughter doeth good like a medicine. Yeah. I'm sick enough physically. I'm going to laugh sometime. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so where are we now? Where we are? Here we are. John 16 and 33. I'm going to try to get through this. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. But in the world ye shall have, talk back to me, tribulation. Are you still with me? I'm trying to preach to those of us who are not experiencing this heavenly journey on earth. I'm trying to speak to people who call me and ask me to pray for situations. And then a day later, the situation has died. I'm talking to people who have lost their husbands and lost their wives and have lost their children. Saints of God who are just as saved as we are who are here. Who comforts them when the bad happens to them? Who comforts them? Who tells them to hold on to God's unchanging hand as opposed to telling them that the reason you didn't get your desired results is because you didn't have faith and you were walking in fear. I'm coming out. You're speaking foolishness. Bad things happen to good people. This was a perfect and upright man. What did my life do? When she had the battle of cancer. I knew her. She was my girlfriend. Now she's been my wife for about 51, 52, 51 years. I see her. The way you see her is the way she is at home. She's sanctified at home. Don't care how hot it is. She's sanctified. It's quiet in the church. Amen. The rapper said it's getting hot in here. And he said he felt like taking off his clothes. But the saints don't do that because they dress as becometh holiness. Regardless of how hot it is. I'm coming out now. You should have left me alone. You should have just left me alone, but I'm coming out now. I'm coming out because I've got people telling me that they it don't take all of that. I'm coming out. It's holiness or hell. This is a suffering way, according to scriptures. Think it not strange, believers, concerning fiery trials, which are, that means they're coming, to try you like some strange things have happened. But you have an obligation and the ability to rejoice and be exceedingly glad, watch this, for great is your reward where? Not down here. No, sir. That's why you're getting disappointed. You're trying to have a heaven on earth. The sole purpose of Christ coming into the world was to save us from eternal damnation. What I need you to do for me to speed up this lesson is to say amen when I tell truth. Amen. It's the word I want to hear amen from the saints and the sinners too. You can't come at my house and not say amen. Luke 19 and 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save, what? That which was lost. Somehow, many believers have been taught to believe that nothing evil happens to them, causing them to develop a false sense of security, even become foolish in their thinking. Then, when the unexpected happens, they faint. Because you want to know, how could God allow your seven children to be killed? How could God allow all that he blessed you with to be stolen? How could God then allow Satan to touch him with the sore boards from the top of his head to the sole of his feet and then have his wife go off the chart and say, why don't you just curse God? Now, you wasn't saying that, honey, when you had this seven beautiful children. You weren't saying that, honey, when we had a hedge around all of our stuff. You weren't saying that, honey, but now that some of your stuff is being taken away, and God is, watch this, permitting 
not doing it, but permitting. God didn't do this. He permitted it. And that's where I'm having, that's where I've got my deliverance, my brother, is because what's happening to me, the devil has to have permission to do it. I'm going to talk to him. I belong to him. My body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. I don't say this for sympathy, but I tell people I'd be sick every day, and I was sick this morning. Praying. And in this word, and my prayer, give me strength to deliver this word. Amen. Because I've come to the conclusion, as of a few days ago, I am going to accept what God allows. Amen. Whatever he wills, I will. Amen. Whatever he permits, I'm going to accept it and trust him. Amen. Have you ever been there and the devil came and you, you blamed it on the devil? You rebuked him? You said, send in the Lord rebuke you. You cast him out in Jesus' name and he came back. Amen. You prayed to be healed and it did not happen. You had to go and have surgery. When I'm in the hospital, I still speak in tongues. I'm going to come out today, saints. I don't have to hoop. I know the power of the word. Amen. I am in a position where I'm trusting God. Whatever he allows. I'm trusting him because I believe that, amen, nobody left the gate open and the devil snuck in. If God has a hedge about me, there's a hedge about me. Amen. <laughs> Who said you would not be sick? Oh, I'm going to get some comments from somebody. <laughs> Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. You got to be in something to be delivered out of something. They taught me, the old mothers taught me, and I have their picture in my office. This is a suffering way. Oh, I, I came to with these notes. I did not come to God to get something. I came to God to get saved. Let me try it again. I didn't come to God to get a, a nice car. Brother Tony, I had nice cars. I rode in nice cars. I got my cars off the showroom floor, never test driving, just got it and drove off. I had money. We, we had a house. We bought a house when we first got married because I was a veteran. We had several houses. Amen. We traveled. We flew places. We enjoyed life. We enjoyed the pleasures of sin. We weren't struggling financially. We did whatever we wanted to do. Before we met God, we had a job. She had a job. Are y'all still here? But then when I came over here with y'all, Soon as I came over here with y'all, I was a Seattle policeman, one of Seattle's sevens, seven black officers when y'all didn't have black officers, except for Milton Price, Walt Lawson, maybe one or two others, Guy and Hammer, I think. Amen. And we came on, they recruited us and brought us on as policemen. And for the first three years, I was the radical policeman mm -hmm. that bust dirty cops, that made you get your knee off the neck. Mm -hmm. You didn't do that on our watch. Mm -hmm. And nobody died on our watch either, mm -hmm. except those that were shot in the back, mm -hmm. in the south end. And out of respect, I won't mention his name. But when I met Jesus on a Sunday morning, mm -hmm. and we're just going to talk about it. Me and my partner, Fred Carr, we, we carpooled to work together. This is not in my notes. And I decided to take the day off work on Sunday and go to church instead of work. Called in and told my sergeant I wasn't coming in. And while I was sitting in the church, Fred Carr, my homie, we used to hang out together. Again, he didn't have a car, so I would pick him up at his apartment and take him to work, was shot and killed down the street from where I was. I was at 1915 East Ferd, he was killed right a couple of doors from 
Group Health Hospital. I have a picture of the place. I went there and stood out there on a day like today and cried like a little girl. Amen. Because he got shot and walked out on the porch and said, I'm hit, and he died. And I have post-traumatic stress syndrome because nobody counseled me. Go ahead and preach me. I don't know where this is coming from. Nobody counseled me. No chaplains talked to me. Amen. When I was radical and partying and getting high, I was one of them. But when I became a Christian, they wanted to know, can you kill a man? The chief was out of town, and they took me into a little room. And in 45 minutes, they took my badge, my whistle, and my gun and put me outside on 3rd and James. Took my job. Now, in retrospect, I had a good lawsuit. It's quiet now. I'm making a point. I've internalized all of this for years. Ain't nobody talked to me. Ain't no psychiatrist talked to me. Y'all know what PTSD is? It's been almost, what, 30 plus, 40 years or so ago, and I'm still dealing with it every day. Every day. Sometimes I wake up and I say, I could have been dead. Sometimes I wake up and say, I should have been in hell. I was worse than him. As a sinner, he was a semi-square. I was worse than him. But his last words to me were this. He said, Sam, I've been watching you. He says, and you're for real. And I won't bother you no more. Fourteen days later, he was dead. It could have been me. It could have been you. And some of you have suffered some things that you have kept internalized. As I preached that it was last Sunday. You've got to be able to release some of this. Watch this one. You need somebody to talk to. I don't know about you, but the God I talk to, he does not talk much. Because he said all he's going to say. He does not talk much. He will listen. His ears are open to the cry of the righteous, but he's not <coughs> sit there and have a what is the proper word? A dialogue with you where you talk, then he talks for an hour. You talk for an hour, then he talks for an hour because I can talk two or three hours. And when I talk to him for that length of time, sometimes I talk to him all day long and seem like he just sits there like my father said. Mm -hmm. Because what he's saying to me, I've already told you everything that I need to tell you about everything I need to tell you. And I told you not to think it's strange when crazy stuff comes. When storms come in your life, just because you're a believer, oh, I wish I could preach today. <laughs> Brother Paris and I were talking, and, and uh, there was a fly. We were sitting down in the family room, and a fly came in. And I'm normally a very, uh, you know, cautious person and um, very nice to God's creatures. And when they get in my house, sometimes I'll open the door and let them out. But these two flies, Perry said, there's two of them. I killed both of them. <laughs> I had this frustration, this anger build up, because I, 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 I tried to give him a break, but then he came back, and he was taunting me, just flying over me to know you missed me. And then when I got in trap, Brother Tony, I killed him and I said these words that says, you should have never come into my territory. Yeah, yeah. You'll get that next week. There's sometimes when the devil comes into your territory, he needs to be killed right away. You're going to get this later. Because his intentions is to make you curse your God yeah, yeah. to your faith. One, yeah. oh, I don't know if y'all pray for me, something yeah. happened. Something has happened. Something has happened. The reason the church cannot do what the church was instructed to do and empowered to do, there is a demonic influence in the air. It used to be far above us, principalities and powers, but now he's come down unto us. And we made it comfortable for the devil. We made it comfortable for his spirit, even in the house of God. And until the air is cleansed 
And the devil who had no right to be amongst us is right. cast out from amongst right. us. Yeah, yeah. The church will have no power to lay hands on the sick. The church will have no power to cast out devils. Yeah. You cannot cast out devils. You can cast out Beelzebub by the prince of devils. And we have to be together when it happens. This is a suffering time for everybody. 39 pastors and bishops. <clears throat> and just recently, out of respect, Bishop Hankerson, who was a resident of Washington State, texted us. I received a text asking us to pray. I believe he even spoke to you in person, I believe. Every day. Because she was where his wife was. And if you know Bishop Hankerson, he trusts God, he believes God. Amen. Man of faith have seen the miracle working power of God and was expecting God to give a miracle. Yeah. But for whatever reason, unbeknown to all of us, God permitted his precious wife to transition. Yeah. The point I'm trying to make, brothers and sisters, is who speaks to them that didn't get the miracle. I'm coming out. And I'm speaking to them. That just because you are saved does not mean you're going to be immune from the negative things that's on planet Earth. I'm coming out. I haven't even turned one page. You that think that the vaccine is the mark of the beast, you are foolish. Somebody told me they're putting chips in us. Right. Number one, when I got my first dose, I said, put it in my left arm, not my right arm. So the mark of the beast goes on your right hand <laughs> and your forehead. And the number of the beast is 666. Then somebody told me, said, well, they're putting chips in, they've been put, putting chips in y'all ever since you've been black. And I hope you put a chip in me because you're going to be able to track me. I go to church, safe way to get grocery, and home. So you want to follow me to church and prayer? That's wonderful. Are y'all still here? I'm trying to, to calm you and then prepare you at the same time. Yes, we are saved, but reality, the word of God, watch this. Oh, God, I, I'll trust you. Even in the book of Romans, when it comes to policemen, nobody told me that these policemen are ministers of God, and they do not bear the sword in vain. No one told me that. Sister Overall, but the Christians told me you could not be a Christian and bear arms. So I left my job and end up eating food, bad food. I'm not saying I was perfect like Job, but I was saved as much as I knew, then why don't I have a job, and why did I subject my family to eat food, bad food? Because the older mothers taught us that every food going to be meddling. They taught us this is a suffering way. They taught us that after we justified, the mothers would call you over and say, come here, young man, said, I enjoyed you today, but the devil heard you too. And sure enough, within 24 hours, the devil was knocking at the door trying to do something. The point I'm trying to make, they prepared us for the negative. I'm trying to prepare you for whatever God allows. Is there anybody in here that God has allowed some stuff to happen in your life? I see mother over here. Good to see you, mother. Daughter. Sometimes I think about the lady. I got the right person? His last words to me, go and tell the world the party's over. I flew to California. Go and tell the whole world the party's over. My brother at 37 years old, his last words, he said, Larry, this ain't about nothing. 
traveled all over, been on TV, or Arsenio Hall, and traveled all over, invested in all the movie stars. But when it came down to the end of life, he said, that ain't about nothing. So then you have people who, who, are, who are forfeiting what church people are now longing for. I don't want no stuff. I want to be saying, I know how to get stuff. And I'm still here. Love not the world. And brothers and sisters, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Talk to me, please. And his righteousness and then what's going to happen? All of these things that you can handle, all these things that will not cause you to love God less, he said it will be added to you. Watch this one. With some persecution. I wish I had some Bible believers here. You're not going to get out of suffering and going through just because you say, even if you're perfect and upright and got a hedge about yourself. Our joy and peace is in him, in the presence, in the Holy Ghost, and not in fleshly, temporary, fleeting stuff. <laughs> Luke 12 and 15. I must hurry. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things he possesses. That's what amazes me. As if most Christians are seeking the stuff that we used to have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trying to get a nice car. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. Trying to get a nice house. Mm -hmm. Praying to God for some kind of crazy relationship. Mm -hmm. We had a whole bunch of them when we came to God. We're not looking for what we left. We're looking for what we don't have. And God says, I'm going to give it to you, Pastor Tom. Listen, I'm 72. I have no regrets about living saved and sanctified. To include two heart attacks, two strokes, and anything else you can think of has happened to me. But guess what? My heart is fixed. I need somebody here. And I'm coming out and let the devil know that God Talk to me, Joe. shut up, my God. I let the devil know. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And that's what God needs to hear, declared and decreed from the people of God. Because the world is looking at us and trying to see, amen, how strong our faith is. And whether or not we're going to give up when the bad things come. Easy to talk about God when you when you ride in your nice car. So we all got some nice ones. Come on, talk to me, church. Easy when things are going well. But what happens when the tide turns? What happens when sickness is permitted to attack you? Am I preaching yet? Now, you might say it's the devil. Can I just preach from my mindset? When God permits the devil, and I got a foundational scripture, he moved the hedge. And I believe that it could not get to me except God moved the hedge. I don't know why he moved the hedge, but I tell you what, I'm more saved than I've ever been. I'm more confident than I've ever been. I'm more anointed than I've ever been. And it took me two heart attacks and two strokes and the craziness and all the other crazy stuff that's going on in my life. All of it pushed me right into the face of God. And if you read this word, brothers and sisters, if you read this word, there were two groups of people. There were those, oh, God, help me talk. There were those who, who, who had a head that was never moved. They stopped the mouths of lions. They subdued kingdoms. That's Hebrews 11. They received their dead alive again. But my Bible said, but others. I'm preaching to a but other group. The Bible said they were homeless. Wanderers in the wilderness. The Bible said they were fed to lions. The Bible said they were sawed asunder. They were tarred and feathered and set on fire. Died. He shut up. Died in the faith. Never. I need some help here. Never receiving the promises. But the Bible said they embraced them. Saw him in the distance and died holding on to God. God got to have some ride of thy sense. Come on. We need some ride of thy sense in the church. Time out for the wimp. That the only time you praise him is when things 
things are going good. That's why he said, offer unto him the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of your lips. That means you come and press your way when you don't feel like it. That means you open your mouth and give him praise, even when sickness is in your body. I don't know about you, but all the saints that God had blessed me to be with, amen, when they were transition, transitioning, Pastor Heflin, <coughs> amen, and some of the others, when I was with them, they were still praising God. Yeah. Superintendent L.J. Green from Great Revival, hallelujah, I was with him. Hallelujah, sometimes he didn't know A from the bullfrog. I need some old people here. Sometimes he'd walk out of his house and lived in a CD. And they would find him on, on Ferdinand at his church, in there on the altar, praying to a God that permitted him to almost lose his mind. You ain't gonna get this. He told me, he said, young man, he said, I, my mind is not working. He had Alzheimer's. He said, but one thing I have not forgotten. My God, I feel something now. He said, I might forget who I live, but I don't forget who I live for. Church today. Hallelujah. I might not be as well as I want, but I'm going to lift my way to the house of God. You see, I got a problem with all of you stay at home folk. God got you staying at home. You don't have two or three shots. Amen. You don't, you don't have two or three shots. They still won't come to church. I'm going to get in trouble now because I'm coming out. You see, I don't have no problem because as an adult, you make your own decision. But the next time I see you at the restaurant, I'm calling you out. The next time I see you at the, at the, at the park, I'm calling you out. I'm coming down to the park where you're at. And for everybody, I'm going to say, you didn't come to church on Sunday. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. What's your excuse now? You've been vac vaccinated? Did you have COVID? Did you have COVID? You saved? Sanctified and contracted COVID? Yeah. Did you got through it? Yeah. Now you back in church? Yeah. Sending the God? Somebody ought to praise the Lord for me. I know she saved. I know she filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But COVID came to her house. Yeah. You ain't gonna say nothing. Been singing in the choir since she's been here. Worshiping and praising while she's been here. Hardly ever misses a service unless she has to work or sick and then COVID knock on her door. And you healthy. You don't have no problems. You don't need no money. They got a husband and you still single. And they crying. It's time for the suffering sex to come out the closet. And tell them that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he permits it to happen, yet will I trust him. Because I'm going to accept. I said, I'm going to accept. Can I get somebody to stand up and, and pull up your fist and tell the devil? from y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, say, I am, I am going to accept Get the drug. 
church and testify yeah. about what we were going through. Yeah. And then ended and said, I still got my joy. Yeah. And then looked around and said, I feel better now that I testify. Yeah. And then it was until the saints that pray my spirit to the Lord. Suffering is a way of the believer. Yeah. Oh, in as much as Christ has suffered in the flesh. Do what? Arm yourself like what? The same Accept what God allowed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It was Job's spiritual positioning that enabled him to make that profession. What would you do? What would you say if you lost everything? Lost your mind? The Bible says what your treasure is. Go ahead and talk. Then your heart going to be there also. Hallelujah. One day I, I had an attitude. I had a, I think it was an expedition or something. What was it? Navigator. When they first came out, Blue Navigator, 67,000 miles, had some gold in the paint. And I got a call from a collector that said, You haven't made your payment. I just missed it. It didn't, wasn't that I had no money, I had a job. And so I got an attitude, not a saintly attitude. I said, ma'am, there's one thing I know. I preached to us. And I know you don't work for Lincoln. Because you're in your house. I can hear your kids in the background. You just a bill collector. I said, I'll tell you what to do. You tell me where to take your car. And I'll give it back to you. She hung up. Everybody said, early. The next morning, I went outside. My car was gone. Did you hear what I said? She bought the wolf ticket. You ain't listening to me. The devil is buying your wolf tickets. You're talking about great as he, act like greater is he. You're talking about you can accept what God allows, act like you can accept it. But if you don't, you're going to go out in the morning and your stuff going to be gone. The devil wants to see how you're going to respond to what God permits. The devil told me I had, I had bone cancer. I'm preaching anyhow. So you know what I did? Now this is when I had the real faith. I went and borrowed one of them portable wheelchairs. I'm preaching. I told you I'm coming out. I used to be radical like this before I got with y'all. You don't tell me religious people, organizational people. <laughs> well, Bruce, you were here. I got in the wheelchair. I think it was Mother Thomas. I got in because she had two of them. Oh, I love Mama Thomas. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Mother Thomas lived all the way down. I forgot how far it was. Mom was so many long. And when she got confined to the wheelchair, Mother Thomas, on a day like today, would ride in the wheelchair. Am I talking to somebody? This the saint of God that bought the pool that's over there. She bought the pool so she could be baptized. In. We're going to put a big sign up there, Mother Thomas. She, she would come all the way, Brother Tony, in her wheelchair with her church clothes on and her big hat on in the summertime in this, in this wheelchair to church. I won't even walk that far. I don't even want to drive that far. Every Sunday here she comes. And guess what? She also had a different color one to go with her clothes. Oh, y'all missed it. See, you missed it. See, see. The devil will fix her and she gets to a wheelchair. She gets one, I think, one with blue and one with red. Yes, yes. So guess what I did? I said, can I borrow your wheelchair? Uh -huh. She said, yes. I'm like a son to her. I got in that wheelchair because they told me I had to, they thought I had, thought, thought I had the bone uh, cancer. And I got in the wheelchair and I said, Satan, this is how I'm going to act if God allows this to happen to me. And they got to play at some church music. And I got in that wheelchair and I made it do a wheelie. I made it spin around. 
Y'all, y'all, you go, okay, I tell you what you do, stay in the closet. Stay in the closet. Because if you stay in the closet long enough, you're going to hang yourself in the closet. Well, I'm coming out. <laughs> it's not only that I'm coming out with my hands up. Y'all don't come out of that I show them, sometimes you got to show the devil how you're going to act if God permits it. You got to tell them, I'm still going to praise you. I'm still going to worship you. I'm still going to pray you. I'm still going to fast you. I'm still going to sing the Lord. I'm going to lift up my eyes. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do when things look bad down here. I'm going to lift up my eyes unto the hills from which comes my help. My help. Push you to talk back to me. My help does not come from down here. My help comes from the law. My help does not come from the side
mean good people? I don't know. But I decided that whatever he permits, spiritually, naturally, mentally, physically, if he permits it to come to my house, yeah. I'm going to accept what he allows. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I ain't rousing no more with no demons. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. I ain't rousing no more with no demons. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, Michael, then, when the devil showed up, he said, didn't bring any will and ac accusation against him. Oh, demon of cancer, oh, demon of heart attack. The devil, he's the devil. You got to put all this other stuff on him. The Bible said all he said was, the Lord rebuke you. That's all the devil's getting from me from now. The Lord rebuke you. Y'all didn't hear what I said. In the name of Jesus, say that the Lord rebuke you. Yeah. He tried to come to your mind, say the Lord rebuke you. And guess what happened? He might not respond to you when he responds to that name. Yeah. Demons tremble when they hear that name. And that's why the name, you very seldom hear it in the church. You hear about the name of Jesus. When you speak his name, demons tremble. Every knee must bow. Every tongue shall confess. My brothers, thank you. And sisters, thank you for the time. I didn't preach it like I wanted to. I preached it like I felt it. We have to accept what God allows. These all, Hebrews 11, 13, I'm done. These all died in faith. Not having received the promises. <coughs> But having seen them, seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they are strangers and pilgrims. Who remembers the old mothers? Saints, this is not our home. Nobody remembers that? We're preparing to stay here. We should be preparing to leave. We should be laying aside weights and sin. Amen. Amen. And running Amen. with patience the race that is set before us. But instead, they're trying to calm us down and make us relax and making us become ease in Zion. And then when that, that major test or crisis comes and death knocks on the door or sickness knocks on the door, then we faint when we should have been prepared. When the devil knocks on the door, so I've been expecting you. You didn't get it. In your scripture, when Job, when the enemy came, Job, Job said, Did we not receive good things at the hand of God? Shall we not also receive evil? Did Paul have his head cut off? I told you, I'm coming out. Did Paul have his head chopped off? Did this same Paul, one of the greatest preachers ever lived, did he go before God and watch this? The messenger of Satan? The messenger of Satan was there to buffet him and all he would do was preaching the gospel, remain single and celibate, chose not to be married even though he said he could. He said, but necessity is laid upon me. And yet this man got a thorn in his face. He said, I sought the Lord three times. What did God say? He said, my grace is sufficient and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? And then they cut his head off. John the Baptist. Jesus said, there's none greater than him. And they cut his head off. He got into prison and I'm done. Look at the message he sent. He was the same one said, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Then he said, Told him to repent you vipers. Out there in the world is preaching the gospel. But the minute pressure came on John, he says, I want you to go and ask Jesus this question. Is he the Christ? Or should I look for another? We cannot afford to have people come into the kingdom with unrealistic expectations. Did you hear me? Give them the truth so they know what they're getting into. You have to give up your friends. Except you hate, love less, your mother, father, sister, brother, and yet your own self. You can't be my disciple. 
You got to give up stuff. You got to love everything. Everybody less than you love him. And you got to love him more than you love them. Because the test is going to come. When you might have to walk by yourself, sister. You might have to walk by yourself, brother. You might be left out in the cold. And then wonder, why did God permit this to happen to me? No, just accept what he allows. Stand with me. Father, in Jesus' name, the reality of it is that we are living in the worst times. You, out of your own mind, said these are the beginning of sorrows. But the end is not yet. A lot of saints are suffering. Saints are in a place of sorrow and pain. Our children have left us and gone astray. The enemy has taken their minds and we're praying for them. And they're telling us that not now, not now, not now, not very now. But we know that the enemy is trying to kill us. I found in front 
promises to the lady. I explained to her, showed her my, my anaphylactic documents from the hospital, the doctor we went to, and instructed me that I should take it. Sent me to a uh, specialist who specializes in allergies and all of this. All of the medical science says I could do it without any reaction. And I went. The problem I had was my arm was sore, had some muscle spasms, had some chills, and worked in my yard for about five hours on the same day. I'm not telling you to do that. What would Jesus tell us to do? What would Jesus tell us to do? If, if you have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, who, who's going to give directions now to the people of God? They're dying, brothers and sisters. Saints are dying. You ready for this? I'm, I'm, out, I'm out the closet. Who has not been vaccinated. Now I'm going to cry. They're dying. And if I was God, I'd hold you accountable. If the watchman sees the sword of the Lord coming and warn the people, and they don't take heed to it, then the blood is on their hands. But if you can see,
and sisters. Amen. Even as you go through it. Come on, stand up. Somebody come and get these instructions. Let me see. Is there anybody besides me that's going to prepare them? Because I know our witness is the one that we have. I see several of you. And I, I want you to know I feel you. You got your issue. I got my issue. You know you're saved. I know you're saved. But yet, still knocking it out. The ultimate purpose of the devil is to get you to cast away your confidence, which has a great reward. He wants you to cast that away. And I'm told when you cast that away, guess where you're going to end up? You're going to end up right back out there doing what you used to do seven times worse. Where would I go? Anybody here? Where would I go? If, if I left right now, these days, where would I go? What would I do? I can't survive out there in the streets. I didn't know what to do no more. I, I, I'm 72. I quit when I was 23, so I it had, what, 70, 69? What we know of 50 something years of changing the game out there. That's the last place I need to go. Every place I go, no matter how I dress, they say, Red. I went to the car wash. They told the people to stop smoking the door outside. I went to get my car wash. They said, stop it right now. I want this to be Grandmama Pretty. That's Reverend Townsend. And I wouldn't have no Reverend clothes. And he told everybody out there to quit smoking the weed and stuff. He said, Reverend Townsend's on the, on the line. Now, what if I come out to tell you, are you serious? They'll, they'll beat me down. Last comment. I can do this because I'm out now. I used to have church since 3 o'clock. People get saved. I talked to a young man on the phone yesterday. We received the baptism of the Holy Ghost by word right where he's at. He stayed. He was talking like this after the service. And he started got baptizing in the Holy Ghost sitting back there. Three people that day received the baptism in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. You don't even hear about that. Because the atmosphere is contaminated. As soon as we clear the atmosphere, matter of fact, I hear something on next Sunday. We clear the atmosphere. Come prepared to pray with me. I'm talking about in Sunday worship service. Come prepared to drive the devil back to where he's supposed to be. He can do what he wants to do outside, but he can't be coming up here. I ain't talking about with you. I'm talking about the devil. Yeah. Was it not Paul when he walked in to get rid of the devil's message? A woman got up and prophesied, These be the men. Yeah. Blessed be the paths that they have sucked. These yeah. be the men that lead us to the king of Paul. Where we said, The Lord will be yeah. the king. Am I right or not? Yeah. And until we bind the spirit of the enemy, and not a person, the spirit of the enemy, in our atmosphere, we're not going to see the miraculous happening, saith the Lord. So that 
next Sunday we're going to come and clear the air. Amen. All right. The Lord bless you. Somebody's in charge. Thank you for your patience. I took you all up. Oh, wow. 122. How long did I keep up here? Hour? Two? Just a blessing. Amen. All right. How many of you don't have air conditioning at home? Oh, that's why you stay. <laughs> Who remembers we did this one year? Rebuke somebody over me. Don't do this to me when I'm trying to help you. Flow with me when I'm trying to help you. And if you can't feel where I'm at, just, just don't sit, don't. I have deserved it. Don't do that. Because when in my old day, I rebuked you openly. Do y'all remember that? And silence you in the church. Don't, don't let me go all the way out. Sometimes it might not be for you, but for some person, somebody's life could be hanging in the balance, and you're in a hurry. They're doing everything in the churches now. We have air in here, and we'll never decide that this is a historical uh, temperature. And we told all the saints in the church who didn't have air conditioning to come here. And we, this, this is not on as high as it could be. And we had air conditioning. We had popcorn and stuff outside over there, some food, and we put some, some Christian movies. Nobody remember this little thing? And you can just sit there and eat. We had the rapture of different Christian movies. Keep you from going to your house, burning up. Well, when it comes to hell, I'm not going to be able to help you. <laughs> The Bible said, remember in your lifetime, you had your chance. See, if you go to hell from this church, then you come out and tell you the truth. God said, that boy preached to you. He told you the truth. They said, let me go back and tell my homies, let me go tell my brother, my partners, not to come to this place. He said, they're not going to hear you. They got Moses and the other preachers. And they're certainly not going to hear a person says he come from the dead. This is a matter of life and death, brothers and sisters. What if the Lord would come right now? Would you be ready? Not getting ready. Are you saved enough to go to heaven right now? Well, Pastor, I don't think I was going to I ain't talking about that. Are you saved enough to go to heaven right now? He coming out the church without a spot. See? You don't want to hear this kind of talk. Without a wrinkle any such thing. I see wrinkles in people's lives and such things in people's lives and they think they're saved because nobody's preaching the truth anymore. All right, Lord bless you. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for your patience. Who's ever in charge? You take it from here. Y'all don't know how to preach again. Because I'm coming out. Go back and tell all your friends, share it. So Pastor Thomas, I'm coming out the closet. He said he's a holy this preacher. We thank you for joining the broadcast of Greater Glory Ministries. It's our prayer that you've been challenged and encouraged by the word and empowered to make a godly difference in the world. We appreciate your continued financial support of our ministry through your tithes and offerings via Cash App, PayPal, and Giveify. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, we would love to hear from you by calling our intercessory prayer line at 888-723-6419, extension 7. We invite you to subscribe and to stay connected with us on our social media platforms via Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel at GGM Seattle. Be sure to join us for our Thursday night Bible study at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every Sunday for greater glory in the morning at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. On behalf of our pastor, Superintendent Sam Townsend Sr., yours truly, Mother Gwendolyn Lawson Townsend, and the entire Greater Glory Ministries family, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and your family. And as you continue through your week, remember to give the Lord the highest praise of hallelujah.